Hi y'all, we are here at the Godly Sefco. We'll kind of give you an idea what that looks like. Sorry, ba boom, here's Vanna. And we've got our bikes and we are heading down to Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose, Texas. Yay! Well, I've almost fixed the door from when somebody tried to use it as a drive-thru. Yeah, I figured they'd fix it pretty quick. I probably can't make money if you're closed. We moved to Texas a little over 20 years ago, and Dinosaur Valley State Park was the first Texas state park that we ever went to. Some people that I worked with said, hey, you should check this park out. If you've got kids, they've got real dinosaur tracks in the riverbed, and our kids love dinosaurs. So we went down there, we checked it out, and sure enough, we could see them. Uh, many, many years later, we got uh, our motorcycles, and we wanted to go on a camp out, do some tent camping with the bikes, but we needed a lot of stuff, so we had our kids come with us in a car that had all the equipment and things in it. Um, because, you know, camping equipment that fits on a bike is, you know, not the cheapest. So we would always camp with a support vehicle. And the first place we ever did that was Dinosaur Valley State Park. And we're going to have, in a couple of months, a new kind of content that's going to be added to this channel. Um, because, well, <laughs> our kids have moved out and we're, we're empty nesters. And to go camping, we kind of have to go on our own now. And as it turns out, uh, there is a teardrop camper in our future that's a little too big for the bikes to pull. So, uh, but we figured, hey, let's take a time, let's take some time and take the bikes out and scout out some of these local state parks. So we're going to put together a series of videos. This is the first one in the series of us just kind of showcasing the Texas state parks up here in North Texas, and we might even expand out from there and just kind of give you a tour of them from the saddle of our motorcycles. campsite number five in the one and only uh, RV and tent campground here at Dinosaur Valley State Park. They, as you can see, this one's available, so uh, we're not going to be interfering with anybody. All of the RV and powered and watered campsites at Texas State Parks have a little bit of pavement down here. Let's try to tip the camera so you can see. And this is where you'd back up your trailer or your RV. And right behind me over here is going to be the power and the water spigot. Now these are the power and water sites. Dinosaur Valley State Park also has primitive campgrounds for tent camping, and you can also tent camp at these sites. I'm gonna show you some of the other aspects here. In This is a pretty nice camp, campsite. So we've got the picnic table behind me, and right over here, you can see the uh, little metal pole to hang your trash bags off of. 
they've got a grill installed as well as a fire pit with a grill grate down here just gonna make sure yeah i've got that on the camera that's cool and then behind us there's a little bit of trails because these campgrounds are all connected to this building behind me which hopefully you can see it this is the restroom <laughs> the bathroom with showers and all of that stuff involved so this campsite would be good for your own personal convenience but you're going to have people walking through <laughs> at all hours of the night to go pee in the middle of the night um, but it's easy and convenient for you and there's also plenty of areas here to be able to set up a tent right there right there plenty of shade it's a nice sunny day and totally in the shade right now in fact rachel stole my sunglasses so because i wasn't wearing them and that is an intro to the campsite here at dinosaur valley state park well i just wanted to point out that somebody here at this campsite found or created themselves a nice little marshmallow and hot dog cooking stick you can tell that's what they used it for because it's a little bit charred here and here so they probably stuck their little hot dog on there, roasted it over the fire, ate it, and then left it for the next person, which was pretty kind. Now, one of the things I want to point out, this is one of, I think, uh, close to 40 different campsites in this campground. They're not all right next to the bathroom. Some of them are pretty remote. When we camped here before, we were in campsite number 30, which is a long way from here, but it's right next to uh, their little amphitheater. We'll see if we can show you that. So we're walking from campsite five over to uh, where we think the amphitheater is on this little trail. It's a uh, not really a hiking trail it's more of a beaten path that people have used when going to the bathroom in the middle of the night so i have a question for you yeah why is it that in your mind people only go to the bathroom in the middle of the night I, <laughs> nobody ever goes to the bathroom during the daytime in your world uh, I, well it's only going to bother me when i'm sleeping this is well, okay, hang on gotcha. a second. this is campsite 33 when we camped here this was where we were and nice shady campsite and what we did was behind the table over here. There's this big wide spot, and that's where we put uh, the two tents. We cooked stuff on this fire pit. We had some nice pictures sitting on this tree here. Yeah. And had the, the tents right behind me. Yeah. And then right on the other side of us over here is the walkway to the amphitheater, and we're gonna head over there and show you that. Hey, that reminds me. I gotta tell you something that happened to me. I, I had a dream that, um, I was a wigwam and a teepee and it was really it was really scaring me so I talked to the therapist and I said what's wrong with me why do I keep dreaming that I'm a wigwam and a teepee and he said well there's your problem you're too tense but doom tuss <laughs> all right let's uh well we'll go through here we can go through here because this is this is the exact spot where we had our tent set up right here yeah yeah not bad considering that was five years ago. I can remember where we put the tent. I know. <sighs> Had the microphone pointing away. It's not bad that that was, you know, five years ago and I can remember where we put the tent, right? Move this microphone. Now, I'm what still I recall, recording. What I recall from last time is that we were pretty excited. There was supposed to be some sort of a presentation or a thing that was supposed to happen at the amphitheater. It was on the schedule and uh, we tried to attend but it did not happen and we were sad. But by the same token, you know, we're kind of on our slit and then we saw the there's motor, uh, not mountain bike tracks right here. This is where our son decided, hey, the next time we do this, I'm bringing my mountain bike. Which he did. All right, so here, ooh, and somebody's barbecuing, I can smell charcoal. Mm -hmm. Here is the amphitheater, right behind me. A few places where folks can sit. I got this little chimney thing here with the well, stone and it's got power so you could hook up a projector because right on the other side is this great big blank billboard with the exception of the spots that need to be repainted that you could project a video on. It's got lights. This is a sidewalk. We're gonna walk on it because that's what it's for. It's just a little paved area that you can um, 
You, know, you can walk on all those other trails were, as Luke said, sort of beaten paths. But this is one that was actually designed specifically for people to walk on, as you can see by the fact that it's paved. Hey, weren't we just here? Mm -hmm. 43 is There's where it is. So 43 campsites is what this place has. 44. 44 is how many this camp this campsite has. Oh, look, there's the playground. That's yeah. a fun thing. I remember the playground. There it is. Dump station. Yeah, that's where these RV trailers are going to dump their uh, gray water and black water. Uh -huh. uh, and there's the camp host has their own campsite. Okay. Oh, the camps, they got like two. Nice. <laughs> Parks and Wildlife. Department. Three. They got three. Looks like we're going this way. Yeah, we are. Because this is the exit. That's how it works. This is one of the trailheads for hiking and primitive camping, so a lot of folks parked there. What that sign says. Well, that sign says more parking. Uh, they've got it out for things that say park alert, like if there's a burn ban or something like that. I but see. there's nothing on there. there. There are no park alerts right now. So you can put firewood in the fire pit and have that. It basically, yeah, and you can use the, the grill. <laughs> uh, it, it, it hasn't been super dry, so. Here's another car with a mountain bike on the back of it. Yeah, mountain biking is cool. I watched a video the other day about people in Canada that build bike trails. Uh, my friend Glenn had built bike trails and he posted a video about, a, like a mini documentary about people that do that. It's really cool. You would love it, actually. I'm sure I would. Apparently, it's much more of a thing now than it used to be back when um, when you were mountain biking. It's turned into like a family sport. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of really a lot of creativity that goes into making biking trails that are all safe but also interesting and exciting for. Uh, bikers of all levels. We're standing here in front of the dinosaur models that are at Dinosaur Valley State Park. Uh, right behind us here is a model of an Apatosaurus. And then right behind us here is a model of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And these were both commissioned by the Sinclair Oil Company for the World's Fair in New York in 1964-65. However, these aren't the dinosaurs that made the tracks that this park is famous for. I'll ask Rachel to explain those who those are because they're right here on this thing. This plaque says misleading models. Which dinosaurs left their tracks here at Dinosaur Valley State Park? Visitors often think that the dinosaur tracks in the park were made by Tyrannosaurus rex and Apatosaurus, the models in front of you. Although famous and part of the World's Fair exhibit, these two dinosaur species left no tracks here. In fact, they didn't even live at the same time as each other which our kid told us when we first drove up to this park about 10 years ago. And how old was our kid at that time? Seven Six. or eight, yeah, yeah. Um, they knew. Um, Apatosaurus, formerly Brontosaurus, roamed the earth 140 to 160 million years ago during the late Jurassic period, while Tyrannosaurus rex, a relative newcomer, lived 65 to 100 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. So who actually made the tracks? Well, the tracks you'll see here at Dinosaur Valley State Park were actually made by a smaller relative of Apatosaurus known as Sauroposeidon. That's the big guy with the long neck. That's this guy. Formerly known as Paluxysaurus because it's, you know, Paluxy River. Yeah, so that's this guy. He's the one that made the tracks here. And then uh, Acrocanthosaurus. Ac Acrocanthosaurus was another carnivorous dinosaur that walked on two legs. It was 25 feet tall. 30 to 35 feet long and weighed anywhere from 5,000 to 13,000 pounds. It does not say, but I'm guessing that this dinosaur did not make tracks here? No, it did. Those no, are the, it did. These are the ones that made tracks oh, here. Oh, these two, both. Okay, got it. I was confused. So what we're going to try to do now is go find some dinosaur tracks. So what we're passing here is the blue hole, which is one of the track sites. We're going to the main track site because we're also trying to find a hiking trail. Not just, just any hiking trail. We're trying to see a specific hiking, hiking trail. Right, because there's a, a very short hiking trail, which a short hike is all we want to do in our riding gear. 
uh, that goes up to a scenic overlook. And it's accessible from the main, squirrel. Squirrel. It's accessible from the main track site, which is this way. We have overflow parking for buses and RVs. Look at this view. Now look at the, yeah, that's a nice little bluff up there. It's really pretty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a place to park the bikes, go down into the Paluxy Riverbed, try to get some dinosaur tracks on camera, and then head up to the scenic overlook. I see parking with shade. Nice. Let's do it. Ish. Ish. Okay. Shade ish is better than no shade. Yeah, my helmet's getting warm sitting on the bike. Yeah, I agree. I think this is probably going to be the best right here at the top of the stairs. So we're at the top at the main parking lot of the main track site we've got our bikes parked over here got got Rachel here on camera and we turn the mic around so you don't have to watch us and we kind of see where we're going but look at this nice view of the Paluxy Riverbed with all the the rocks and stuff in it down there And here's a little placard that's going to tell us where to, uh, what fossil tracks we're looking at. And you know what, if you want to read that, just pause the video here. And we're going to keep moving. When we were camping, the river was gorged. So we sat on these uh, little bleacher things that they use for, um, I guess, teaching stuff. Like having classes and tour guide type things. And the water was really... I think it was probably up to here is where the water was. I think yeah. it was up to about here, I right? I think you're right, yeah. So, it was torrential. you can see, it's a, they got a little swimming hole over there. And we're gonna go across these rocks to the tracks. <clears throat> very, very clear water here. Hello, hello. And right up these rocks, and here are a bunch of dinosaur tracks. You can see they're roped off so that people don't get in there. But those are dinosaur tracks. You get a really good looking one over here. actually see the toenails on that one claws I guess is probably the better way to say it so there are some dinosaur tracks we're doing this without a map we think this is the hiking trail that'll take us to the scenic overlook yeah, everybody, everything goes somewhere right everything goes somewhere other side of the tracks. Uh, every time we pass flowers like this on the side of the trail, I think of Skyrim and how you're supposed to pick flowers. I hope that's not the way we're supposed to go. <laughs> uh, it probably is. Well, let's keep going this way and see where, where it takes us. Okay. Mama butterfly, baby butterfly. Try to get in and get to baby butterfly. Oh, baby butterfly got scared of the camera. Baby butterfly is camera shy. Yeah. Uh, we have came across a hiking trail that was closed off and I think that's the one that takes us up to the scenic overlook So we're not going to get those shots today But let me just turn over my shoulder here and you can see down the Paluxy River and How nice and everything is you got to see the walk over here We're gonna go head back to the bikes gear up and head home Well, that is going to conclude our quick visit here at Dinosaur Valley State Park in Glen Rose, Texas I don't know why I was looking at the microphone instead of the lens. I, I just got to get used to that um, 
we'll be back here in a few months. There's a bee right in front of us. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here in a few months uh, with an actual camp out. So stay tuned. We'll probably hit another state, Texas State Park here in a week or two. Yay!